Hi everybody, I'm Ms. Clayton and I teach kindergarten in Brantford. We don't have access to a frog pond near our school, so I thought I would take us on a little adventure to the frog pond near my house. This is in Southern Ontario. We're at Sanctuary Park in Dundas and right now we're just at the entrance to the trail that goes to the frog pond. So who wants to come with me on a little adventure? I have my frog hat on and I'm all ready to go. Are you ready? Let's go. We're heading into the woods on our way to the frog pond. We can see a creek that goes through the woods here and we're going deeper in there so that we can see some beautiful trees and we can see the creek a little better. It's flowing quite fast down there. It's a really pretty color see what else we can find on our way. We're following along the creek because the creek is going to end up at the frog pond. You can see a lot of plants starting to grow. It's springtime in Dundas. Lots of little plants along the way here. Some beautiful flowers. And if we look very closely, we can see some animal tracks on the other side of the, of the creek there. Very cool. Spotted my first trillium of the year. The leaves are a little eaten, but we can see this is a red trillium right here. Isn't that pretty? And there's another one that's going to grow right here. We're still following the creek along. Can you hear it? And then now we're coming to a meadow. The creek goes that way. It's going to curve around. We're going to follow the path that goes this way. If you didn't hear the creek before, I bet you can now. The creek goes all the way along there. It keeps going. But over here is where the frog pond is. We just call it the frog pond because we often see frogs here. But it doesn't really have a name. This is a, used to be Warren Park. Now it's just a nature trail that people can walk on through Dundas. So we're gonna get up close to our frog pond here and see what we can see. Oh, did you see that in the water? I think we startled a frog and it jumped away. We'll have to go a little quieter. birds chirping. We might even hear traffic in the distance because this path and park goes right in between two areas of houses in Dundas, in a valley in between. Before we go searching for tadpoles and frogs, I think we need to learn a little bit more about them. And I have a story here called Once There Was a Tadpole, and it is by Judith Anderson and Mike Gordon. There's our title page, and it's written by Judith Anderson and illustrated by Mike Gordon. Springtime is fun. There are many new things to look out for. I look out for frog spawn. The best place to look is in still water near a pond or a riverbank. Frog spawn is a special name for frog's eggs. So right behind me here we have a very still pond so it might be a good spot to find some. Each egg has a ball of jelly on the outside to protect it. The eggs stick together. If they didn't, they wouldn't last very long. Ooh, dinner. My sister wants to take a little bit of frog spawn home. But we don't take it from the river. We take it from our friend's backyard pond. Weed? just a few eggs and lots of pond water. After a few days, we see a change. Each dot gets bigger and grows a little tail. 
It wiggles its tail very hard to push its way out of the jelly. It eats some of the jelly too. The dot has become a tadpole. At first the tadpole is just like a fish. It breathes underwater through little slits called gills. Yippee! But after one or two, sorry, after two or three weeks, its gills disappear. Eventually, the tadpole must swim to the surface to breathe in air. Just like we do. Tadpoles need to eat in order to grow. They use their tiny lips and teeth to nibble on plants in the water. They need plenty of food. They also need clean water, warmth, and shade. When the tadpole's body is the size of a fat pea, two bumps appear on its sides. Soon these bumps grow into back legs. Wow! Then two more bumps appear. Guess what these will grow into? Front legs! I'm so clever! Now the tadpole is changing quickly. First its tail gets shorter, its eyes start to bulge, and its mouth gets wider. It starts to eat insects and little worms. Mmm, tasty. Twelve weeks after hatching, the tadpole's tail has vanished altogether. It's time to put you back. It looks like a little frog. Now it is called a froglet. The froglet begins to climb out of the water and spend time on dry land. After about three years, it has finished growing. Now it is an adult frog. In the spring, the adult frog looks for a mate. He croaks to get the female's attention. Croak? Mmm. Croak, croak, croak. He's not the only one. The female frog lays her eggs in a safe place in the water and the male frog fertilizes them. Next spring we'll go looking for frog spawn again and the frog spawn will hatch into tadpoles again and the tadpoles will change into frogs again. It's a life cycle, a life story that goes around and around over and over again. The end. So who is excited to go and look in the pond to see if we can find some tadpoles? And I don't know what else. Let's go find out. Hey, we have spotted a giant tadpole. It doesn't have any legs yet. You can see its head. I don't know if I can point it out very well. It's right in the middle of the screen. A water spider just went past it. See if we can get closer to it and maybe it will swim away so you can see how it can swim. Let's just hope Miss Clayton does not fall in the frog pond. There, it's still right there in the middle. Do you see it now? It's just sitting there at the bottom. You can see its tail and its head. I wonder what kind of frog this will turn into. Maybe a bullfrog. It's huge. Now, we don't want to hurt living things, but I'm going to toss a tiny little stick just behind it to see if we can watch it swim. Nope, it didn't move at all. It's a very calm little frog. In the making? And I shouldn't say water spider, it's a water strider that's on the surface of the water. All right, we're gonna see if we can find 
some more tadpoles. I'm just going to walk along here, see if we can find a better spot to have a look. right there. I missed it. There are lots and lots of good hiding spots for frogs out here and other animals and insects. They blend right in so it's really hard to see them at first. This big pile of sticks here actually looks like a nest of some sort. other side right over there. Oh, I just startled a couple of little frogs. Oh, you can see its head poking up right there. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, that's a good one. You can see its eyes, the back of its skin, and the color. It's greenish. It's a lighter green on the bottom. And those big circular things at the side, I believe, are ears. Let's see if we can move in a little bit closer. Maybe he'll, or she, will hop away and we can see it swim. Sorry, a little bit out of, let me see. There we go. You can see its body even under the water. It's front legs, it's back legs. Oh, and it's gone. But there's another one. Unless it's the same one right there. And now you can see its eyes better. Look at that. They're beautiful just watching and seeing what I'm going to do. We will show the animals respect by keeping our distance and just watching. All right, so now we've found a couple of cool grown-up frogs. We'll have a closer look to see if we can find some tadpoles, some more tadpoles. All right, goodbye frog. We'll have a look, see what else we can find. Oh boy, I can see a whole lot of tadpoles in there. They're all clumped together in one spot here. You see them moving around under there? All those little movements, they're swimming away. Hard to tell, probably from where you are, what I'm seeing here. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to catch and borrow some tadpoles like they did in the story because these guys are so fast. They're really big and they're really fast. So, I think we're going to have to wait for some smaller tadpoles so that maybe we can see um, them changing into frogs in the classroom. Let's see if we can see another one. There's one that's right. Yeah, right there. You can see its whole body. It's a little bit speckled. And it's just sitting in the underwater plants, just resting. That can feel probably the sunshine. This is the warmer water because it's shallower. But as I walk along the edge, they all just swim out away from here. You can see some are right there, hanging out in the greener plants out there. Look at that, you can see them moving around. There's so many in this frog pond. 
but even if we can't take some into the classroom, it's probably better to leave them in nature to grow and become frogs. And that is not a frog, but that is super cool. Um, it has, and there's another one over there. Let's see if I can get that one. It has a long body. It has four legs, but it's underwater. Oh, you can see a whole bunch of tadpoles out there. It's pretty neat. So hopefully all these guys will turn into frogs. And the next time we visit, we'll come out and we will hear a beautiful frog song because they make lots of nice croaking noises out here when it gets into the summer temperatures. So thank you very much for coming to the frog pond with me today. I hope that you can learn lots about frogs and maybe you'll get to see some real tadpoles and some real frogs on your own adventures. Bye. One last thing before we say goodbye, can you see on the screen right now how well a frog can be hidden? Have a look right in the middle of what you're looking at and I'll zoom in so you can see this big frog just sitting right here. Look at all those spots. It likes the warm water and the warm sun on its back too, I think. And then there's a tadpole right there. And there's one on the log right there under the water. Wow, so many tadpoles. I can't wait to see all the frogs that are going to be in this beautiful frog pond. Goodbye from Dundas, Ontario.